wanted to jump on and go over a couple of things that happened during the week. Donald Trump returned to Capitol Hill for the first time since January 6, where he caused an insurrection and uh, allowed basically a bunch of people to riot and attack the Capitol and threaten to injure, kill uh, senators, his own vice president. And um, it was obviously one of the darkest days in the history of our country. But he did make his return there. And uh, he was there for apparently some sort of conference where he was surrounded by a bunch of billionaires where he was in a room basically telling them, you give me money and I will do everything I can to help you when I am president, because that's really what it's going to come down to. He is going to help his extremely rich friends and he's going to use his entire presidency to seek revenge on anybody that came after him for crimes that he actually did commit. So, and the the worst part about it is, is that he has a large group of people who make laws that will be backing him in this uh, quest to seek revenge on everybody, including people like Barack Obama, of course, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, he's going to go after the Bidens for I don't know what, uh, and anybody else that uh, had quote unquote, wronged him. But uh, before I play a clip of his one of his little press conferences, I think it's important to go back and remember uh, exactly why it is pretty offensive that Donald Trump is anywhere near this building. It was a very interesting day because they don't report it properly. <laughs> People in that crowd said it was the most beautiful day they've ever experienced. <laughs> there was love in that crowd. There was love and unity. My kids didn't have the courage to do what should have been done to protect our country and our constitution. Real quick, the love and unity was all for him. So when there's love and unity for Donald Trump, the grand master, uh, you know, that's where he feels like he can go out and tell people that everybody out there was there for love. It was peaceful. It wasn't. It was there for them. And then, of course, here's the text message that they are reading out loud uh, that Mike Pence did not have the courage. And, of course, that did nothing but get the crowd even more incensed and more violent. Giving states a chance to certify a corrected set of facts. So I call them the J6 hostages. Not prisoners, I call them the hostages. There will be a lot of pardons and commutations of uh, J6 defendants, January 6 defendants under your administration? Yes, absolutely. They were there with love in their heart. That was an unbelievable and it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day. Yeah, just watching that footage continues to really boil my blood. I mean, it just one of the darkest days in the history of this country. And it came from someone who was the president of the United States. And, you know, I have many times said that uh, this act on that day is in the same conversation as 9-11. And I've had people get really pissed off at me for saying that, but I don't give a fuck what you think. This is a terrorist attack on our country from our own people. And it was facilitated by the person in charge of the country. So if you're going to sit here and try to tell me that this is not the same thing, you want to bring up the deaths. Yes, of course, that day had a lot more destruction and American deaths that made us all sick. And everybody, if you were alive that day, and you, everybody remembers where they were, and everybody really still can get angry and upset about that day. And in fact, it was probably a week or two or months after that event happened, it was probably the most unified this country had been in a very, very long time. And it's awful that it took an event like that to 
get people to all look at each other and go, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what country you're from. Although there were a lot of people who did care what country uh, some people were from during that time. Uh, but, you know, nothing seemed to matter other than people just looked at each other on the streets and smiled and uh, were, were kind to each other after that event. But after January 6th, it was the complete opposite. You just, you saw somebody wearing a MAGA hat or if somebody wearing a MAGA hat saw you with a Joe Biden sticker or something like that. It's just pure anger. And for some people, just pure hate for another American. And, you know, we can sit here all day and try to compare the two, but one attacked our country and the other one responded to those who attacked our country. So that's really what it comes down to. You want to have an argument about it? You want to discuss it? I'm all ears. And you could tell me, although, you know, I'm sure we've all had conversations with the other side on this one before, and they've given us numerous different excuses into reasons why it happened. They've changed their stories numerous times. It was Antifa and Black Lives Matter. It was the CIA, but then now they're patriots. So, you know, again, I, I don't know, being a grown adult, if I am told by somebody that I am supposedly trusting in the reason why we're doing this. And it was a stolen election and all this stuff happened. And if I'm told originally that, no, nope, it really wasn't even us, even though they knew they were there, it was somebody else, but then they changed their stories on multiple occasions. At some point in your adult life, you got to step back and go, this doesn't seem right. And because this is not the only time Donald Trump and the MAGA sycophants have done this. They've done it numerous times where they have said a one particular story and then they continue to change it as time goes on until it lands and sticks to that particular story where now all of the MAGAverse is repeating it. But anyway, Donald Trump gave a little bit of a press conference and I don't know. Look at his face during this press conference. Something's really wrong here and something's going on. Thank uh, the Republican Senate. And I want to thank also the House. We met, as you know, with uh, the full House, Republican House today. And we had a uh, tremendous meeting with them also. And there's great unity, uh, very similar, um, different topics, actually, but not that different. And there's uh, one thing in common, we want to make America great again. We have to get elected. We have to take this, this beautiful place, and we have to make it uh, really something very special again. Right now, it's not special. Great, special, tremendous, fantastic. Just using all the same words that he uses, and he's been using his whole life to emphasize things that never happen. I mean, he emphasizes the beautiful health care plan. He emphasizes everything he says he's going to do as beautiful, great, tremendous. And it just never happens. And why, A, there, as I said earlier, why people as a grown adults at some point don't go, hey, you know, you told us about that tremendous health care system or that, that, that thing you were going to put together. Where is it? But beyond them, because I know he attacks people who are, very easily influenced or they are um, resonating with everything other than the things he's promising. You know, I, it's, it's more about the uh, hatred and the racism and the sexism and the xenophobic stuff that resonates with people. So that's why he could say whatever he wants to them, but it's the more educated people in the Senate I would say the House, but you have to think about some of the people in the House to question the education level uh, of some, really a lot of them in there. But, um, you know, how they are allowing this, they were the supposed constitutionalists and everything Donald Trump wants to do is against the Constitution of the United States. I mean, it just makes no sense to me. And I don't believe that really these are the conversations we've been having, not for a few months, not for a few years, for about eight, nine years now. This is 
something that we have been discussing and talking about. But the good news is, other than that little trip up in 2016, and we could go on all day, especially after um, what came out during uh, before the 2016 election, which got Donald Trump uh, to be a convicted felon. Uh, some of the things they keep talking about Hunter Biden's laptop, if if Twitter did not uh, ban it for that one day, there's a really good chance that Donald Trump would have won that uh, that election, which is outrageously ridiculous. We knew about Hunter's laptop before the election. So this idea that there was some grand plan to hold it up so they could win the election is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but um, but anyway, it, 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 I, I don't know. I, I just like I said, I don't understand how how people can can get suckered by by all of this. But 